My name is John Goralka. I'm the founder of the Goralka Law Firm. We work solely and exclusively in estate, business, and tax matters. We're here to talk about asset protection. That is increasingly a concern for many of my clients. Often some of those concerns are related to divorces, lawsuits, and why is that? As a lawyer, we're trained in torts to look for the deep pocket. We're looking, looking for the maximum recovery for our client. And as a member of society, we all have become somewhat victim-oriented. Things don't just happen. There isn't just an accident. Somebody must be at fault. And if somebody is at fault, somebody must pay. And the system is self-perpetuating. What I mean to say by that, if there's a lawsuit, even if it might otherwise be a frivolous lawsuit, often a settlement makes most sense from an economic standpoint just to stop the pain and stop the bleeding and stop the cost of litigation. But the result of that is we may be encouraging people to file lawsuits that otherwise would be simply frivolous. There are some very strong misconceptions about really what asset protection is. Asset protection is absolutely not about hiding assets. If there's a judgment against you, there's a process where you're going to need to disclose your assets. And in that process, you are required to disclose your assets under penalty of perjury. And you need to be honest and thorough with respect to that disclosure. I have many clients that often call their potential clients and they say, John, I've just been in an accident. I need to protect my assets. John, I've just been sued. What can I do to protect my assets? And a very general broad definition of a fraudulent conveyance is a transfer that is intended to avoid creditors. The test for a fraudulent conveyance is when the circumstances arise which give cause to the claim or the liability. So if you are waiting till after the accident, until after the lawsuit is filed, it's too late for many of the steps that can be taken to protect your assets. One of the steps that you can take to protect yourself, one of the very first, most common and basic steps is to create a limited liability entity. This is particularly important for an operational business. That may be a limited, that may be a limited liability company, that may be a corporation. Also, with respect to professional practices, forming a corporation um, or other uh, limited liability entity helps protect the individual from claims related to those back business activities. That's very often a very important first step. And we typically will use the limited liability company in one fashion or another, even if we're moving on to the next level. And that next level would be utilizing some form of an asset protection trust. And first, we're looking at three different types of trusts that may be available in this regard. A domestic asset protection trust is an asset protection trust that is based in the laws of a state within the United States. You know, for example, Alaska, Nevada, Delaware, and Wyoming, and a handful of other states have created domestic asset protection laws in those states. And those trusts can be effective in protecting your assets from lawsuits and claims. However, a wrinkle to that is there's somewhat unclear authority as to whether a domestic asset protection trust based on the law in the state of Nevada, for example, is really effective in California for a California resident. There is at least one case in California which indicates that that protection may be eroded somewhat. The next level is a foreign asset protection trust. And the entire concept of asset protection trusts really began in the foreign arena, the Cook Islands. It provides a mechanism for what is called a self-settled trust, which is a trust that I create to benefit myself and yet also shield myself and those assets from claims and lawsuits. One of the other very strong benefits of using a foreign asset protection trust is if successful, then the claimant actually needs to initiate litigation in that foreign jurisdiction, which can be very different, difficult and costly. And moreover, the laws in those foreign jurisdictions are very different than the United States. For example, in the United States, to prove somebody guilty of a crime, you need to be guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. On the other hand, for a civil claim, it just has to be more likely than not. In the Cook Islands, you have that much higher burden of proof, so it actually provides a much stronger barrier or protection, even if they have the financial wherewithal to initiate litigation in that foreign jurisdiction. One of the issues or problems with respect to a foreign asset protection trust is that it has a higher cost to establish and it actually has a higher ongoing maintenance cost because you actually need to have a foreign trustee. So again, those costs can be somewhat prohibited. The third alternative, which may be the best for many clients, is what's referred to as a bridge trust. A domestic asset protection trust is established based on a uh, state such as Nevada, but we also establish the foreign trust at the outset um, and 
and when and if there is a call to action, if there is a risk, then the assets are actually transferred to the foreign jurisdiction utilizing the bridge trust provisions to provide that enhanced protection. At that time, you have the much higher cost of administration uh, you know, for that trust on an ongoing basis, but you're only actually paying that when there is a need for that action. Each asset protection plan must be carefully crafted to your specific circumstances and needs and address your specific assets. Oftentimes, what you will see is you'll see a combination of using limited liability entities and an asset protection trust to make sure that those assets are safeguarded in the best possible manner. If you have any questions with respect to how an asset protection plan may be crafted or applied to your particular situation, please call us at 916-440-8036. Click here to subscribe and see more videos on asset protection, estate and tax issues.